Good evening. How's everybody doing tonight? Let me make sure we got everything squared away here. Let's see. All right, Bob, go ahead and check your mic. Oh, hey, how are you doing, everybody? Hey, there we go. All working. Looks like everything is going pretty good so far. Dan had to copy my uh, Hicksville attire tonight. I'm sorry, everybody. Oh, is, is that what it was? Yeah. At least I'm rocking the better hat. <laughs> Who is ready for the English teacher? Yeah. How's everybody doing tonight? Sweatshirt. Give everybody a couple minutes here to get in. Oh, you can't even drink. handle your pop. About drop my Dan, drink? Are you even drinking tonight? No. Besides the Dr. Pepper? Mm -mm. Nope. <clears throat> this is pretty interesting. So we sw I switched up. I switched up some of the simulcasting, um, went through an exterior source for some simulcasting, and now down on the bottom of the screen, it looks like we've got, um, or we have, um, what that, clo it's called closed captioning, I think it is, for hearing impaired. That's pretty, pretty interesting. I like that. You are one digital intelligent man. I think so. Apparently, yeah. I think I do okay. Of course, I had to shame you on the uh, carpenter skills the other night, but... <laughs> yeah, that's right. You did, didn't you? Can you see me okay over there, Bob? Unfortunately, yes. Are you seeing everything okay over there? Well, I'm fast on the screen in front of me, but I'm really damn delayed on the screen on the right of me. Yeah, you're going to be because you're actually looking at uh, the actual live feed through uh, uh, Facebook or whatever. Man, I really need a haircut. You do, man. You look like a you look like a mangy Just mangy dog. Oh, I mean, holy cow! Pretty sad. Man, it's December of last year since I had that knockout. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll wait a couple more minutes here. See how many more people that we get inside. Probably nobody. Yeah, maybe not. It is Thursday, right before the holiday. So. Ain't nobody traveling. They're shutting down airports. I heard already. Hey, Casey. Good to see you again, man. Oh, the Bengals fans back. How does it look on your end, Casey? Everything sound all right? Mike's working okay? Got some other news for you. Man, this camera's fast. Which one? Yep. Actually, it looks pretty good. It's one of the new ones we got. So You're, like, really dark. I know. Um, Leanne was saying something about that earlier today, and I can't... I, I think it's the light. I gotta, I gotta change up the way the lights are. So, but you gotta take that light bulb out and spin it on the other circle. Mm, I'm not gonna do it right now. Maybe next week. I know next week is um, Thanksgiving, but it is what it is. So try to take the light bulb with the one over the end and put it on top of your circle. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. All right. Well, we will wait uh, just a couple more minutes here. You want me to get up and do it? No, that's fine. We'll we'll let it work. It's okay. If I have to go back and superimpose the video later, I can. It's not that big of a deal. So. No, the screen in front of me, you're dark. The screen over there, not so dark. Is it? Okay. I'm trying to figure out which one's my sexy side. <laughs> Come on, ladies, tell me. Leanne, you don't count. <laughs> You're something else, Bob. I'm telling you what, you are something else. Oh, I try to be. All right, so tonight's uh, little um, podcast here or, or live stream. Go ahead and get into it. Um, we're going to go through and um, talk Ladies about. And gentlemen, be ready to be bored. Uh, hopefully not. But it could be some good information for some of these guys. Um, There's no one here. I know, I know one gentleman that uh, definitely needs a little bit of assistance, um, but, uh, you know, I'm a little old school, you got to realize. Um, I'm not into all this newfangled GPS crap. Um, oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. So, um, I'm just not, I'm not into... Alian says echoing, which one? Kind of echoing. So, do we need to probably eliminate... Maybe one of the gains on the mic. It's probably mine. Okay. Well, I scooted closer to mine. Did you scoot closer? Did that make a difference now? I'll turn my gain down and, and uh, 
he set up his stuff. So we'll check it out a little later. Or is this better, Leanne? <laughs> All right, so we're going to get in tonight. Um, tonight's going to be about route planning. Um, oh, Casey is, says Google Maps. Google Maps. Well, that's one way to do things. Um, I'm old school. Um, I never leave home without one of these dudes. Never. So always be in one of my trucks if I ever go out. He's never in a truck anymore. Very rarely. I'm going tomorrow. I'm actually going to New York City tomorrow. I'm echoing. Bob is echoing? Yes. Um, on the top of your mic is what you call a gain. Turn it down. The opposite way where it's at now? Yes. Okay, I'm turning it up towards gain now. It should go... If you're looking at the arrow, the arrow should be pointing to the right of the mic. Yeah, it was all the way down, all the way to this side. It was all, all the way to the other side. Yep. Okay, that's Is this worse now there, Casey? It should be a little bit better now. I'm halfway. So, so anyways, um, like, like I said, I do a lot of, um, I always do all my route planning based on, um, based on the road atlas. Um, it's not necessarily saying that if you're not doing it that way, you're doing it all wrong, I'm, I'm not going down that road. I'm just going to explain some of my experience and um, kind of help some of the newer guys that do this. Um, not, not only save money on fuel, but to be able to have a better trip plan management, um, being able to calculate your times much, much better. Um, and, and it's, it's all going to be due to basically trip planning. Now Dan is more echoey. Okay. Well, I'm doing as much as I can here. So. We can't keep going back on that. We'll, we'll work on something. If we have to turn the mic off, we'll turn the mic off. I'm almost eating this thing in my mouth right now. It's how close it is. Oh, it's not that bad. Okay. So. Um. All right, so, so the number, number one thing that you have always got to be very mindful of, and um, um, you get your shipping documents from a shipping receiver or the shipper, um, they're going to have on the BOL, they're going to have address, pickup, the origin, and the delivery address for the most part. Um, the number one thing whenever you're planning your route, is number one, you need to verify that that information is correct. Um, there, we have had many loads that um, the customer um, has buyers, and those buyers, what they end up doing is the buyers end up trying to schedule the shipments or the arrangements, and they're thinking that it's going to go to an alternate location when it doesn't. Okay, um, you need to make sure that when you're loading up at a shipper, it's very helpful. Just ask them, say, hey. Is this correct? I know you've got it on the BOL, but let's just make sure, just to verify that it's going to be the correct address. Once that is completed, okay, um, you're going to make sure that it's also got a contact number on it. Um, the contact number is important, and we'll get to that at a later time. But anytime that you have a delivery, it's always really nice for, a, for the driver to call ahead to let them know that you're, you know, some sort of an itinerary of when you're going to be there to deliver the order. Um, not in every case, but it helps out tremendously. Um, we deliver to a lot of job sites, and sometimes those job sites need pre-arrangements. Like for example, we have uh, two orders that we're already on right now that we have to worry about. Um, number one, we're dealing with an oversized load. And number two, um, it's going to take some special equipment to come off. Um, now, they already know that we're supposed to arrive tomorrow yeah. about noon. Um, but the thing is, is they need to make sure they have all their equipment set up to take it off, especially on a Friday. Especially on a Friday. Especially on a Friday. So it's very helpful. So um, we've got the, um, the receiver's telephone number and the drivers had that. So we can actually call them in advance and let them know that we're going to, hey, we're looking to be there about noon. Please have everything set up so we can get our driver offloaded and onto the next order um, to keep everything moving along pretty quickly. But 
I kind of stepped, stepped ahead a little bit on the route planning here. Um, when you when you get your address and your telephone numbers that you're going to be delivering to, one of the biggest benefits is okay. Um, what you want to do is you want to enter in that information into your GPS or some sort of whatever you're going to use as a um, GPS device. All right. I know some guys they use the Google Maps on their phones to do it. Um, you can actually have one of those, the GPS's that, you know, go onto the windshield and you suction cup it and all that other kind of stuff. Everybody, you know, that's great to use in things. But the fact of the matter is, is if you're not careful, those things will get you in trouble more times than what you can count, okay? And typically when they get you in trouble, they're going to get you into trouble big time. Um, for example, we're not going to call anybody's name out this week. Somebody made a bad choice this week. and Bad, was, bad choice. It was kind of a bad choice. Um, and they went down the tail of the dragon in Tennessee. Um, that is definitely not a truck route. Um, it is definitely something that you need to be very mindful of. And, and, and it's he had a truck GPS. The truck GPS told him to go down a specific way, so he just followed it. Um, it's one of those things where it's you've got to be very mindful. You're running a truck. You can't rely on those GPSs all the time. They're just the way I look at it is you just use it as a generalized information, and you don't you don't run your truck off of one of them things. But that's just the way I feel. So what I would do is number one, I want some generalized idea of the trip that we're going to be doing or that I'm going to be doing. Okay. Give me some sort of a some sort of, to make sure that I'm following the map correctly and all that other kind of stuff, and to give me some sort of a some sort of a generic roadmap to follow. Okay. Once that's done, though. Once that's done. The issue of it is, is you need to make sure that you check out your road atlas. You figure everything out on the road atlas. You go state by state, and you and you itemize it okay any time that I did an order out on the highway I would literally go from point A to point B and I would put it in to at that time I used somebody in the garage I use my phone and um, um, I just like I said I use it as a generalized way of doing things okay but I would take a sheet of paper or a notepad I had when I was running a truck I'd had all this I, I did everything by notepad okay every order that I did any trip that I that I had I had everything written out in a notepad and I'm sure I could probably go back and find them at a later time um, I can I don't know where Leanne put everything but the fact is, is I have a trip record of every order that I have ever done my, in my whole entire career because I, I have notebooks literally notebooks of everything that I ever did. Now, on those notebooks, um, I would have the trip number or the BOL number listed. Um, I would have um, my planned fuel stops, and we'll get into that here in a couple minutes about how I did that. Um, and I'd have a list in the route that I was going to take or that I would take for that entire trip so that if something went wrong on something, um, I would not have to rely on, on on a device to tell me it's recalculating, or you sit there and you miss your you miss your exit because it's recalculating or or something stupid like that. Now I know that most GPSs they don't recalculate as much as what they used to, but now you know that's the way I did it back in the day. So. That was then, this is now. I know, that was then, this is now, and I understand you got to move with the times, and I, I get that. I, I, I do. But there's been many times where guys have asked me, well, how did I do it when I was when I was doing it? And um, this is how I did it. So I, th I thought this was a great topic to kind of explain. Some of the old school truckers, I, they would fire you. Back in the day when I drove, they would probably, most of them would fire you for even working off a GPS. They wouldn't do it. They, they wouldn't do it. So, but um, you ain't been driving that dang long. Well, it's been. I started in what? 
2002? That, that's 19 years, man. It's not that long. Well, I know there's a lot more guys that have, that have driven a lot longer than I have, and I'm not cutting them down, but that's still, still a pretty long time to be in the industry. So, um, Okay, so typically what I would do from that point is um, I would confirm the routes, um, and I'd follow along with my, with my atlas, and I'd write everything down on a notepad. Like if I, you know, for example, if I was taking a trip down to Indianapolis, um, which here we're here in Hicksville, I'd say Highway 37 to 465 or 469, and then and then 69 South all the way to Indianapolis to either you know Highway 37 back in Indiana or you know whatever, um, and I'd have everything literally labeled and sent out now, and I'd have everything confirmed. I'd go through the road atlas, the actual trucker road atlas, and I'd make sure that you're on a highway truck, or you know, you're on a highway that's made for a truck. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, never just rely on a GPS. But then, what I would do on top of that would be, um, at the time, um, Flying J and Pilot were still separate; um, they weren't, they weren't joined, um, and I had an app. Um, or not an app, but I, I had a laptop with me and I'd carry my laptop and I planned my fuel trips based on that, um, based on the route that I set forth. And I'd already have them pre pranked So this is how I did that. And I told you I'd figure in and get into the, um, you know, the fuel side of things. Do you have, am I covering anything right now or am I rambling? Am I being a school teacher, bub? You're getting pretty dang close, but right now you look like you're fading away on my computer screen. Like, uh, was it Back to the Future when they start losing their parents and everything because of the kissing stuff? You're almost like a white ghost on your side, and I'm like my side over, oh, my side over here is starting to turn all white and like I'm disappearing. Real digi. I mean, you got more gray in your beard right now than you could be Santa Claus. <laughs> Dude, I'm old. Leave man. your hat alone. It's fine. Now you're now you got to shine on your forehead. Is it is a is a hat? Is that what's called making me so dull? No, I mean like now you took your hat off and it now the hat's actually stopping some of it. Hey, you, at least I have hair still. Unfortunately, yeah. Unfortunately, so anyways. Casey said he used a fuel stop book. A fuel stop book? Yep. There's a lot of there's a lot of people that use them too. Yep. Um, definitely use a lot of them. Um, so anyways, what I would do at that point in time, and I'll have to get up on another screen here in a minute, but I want to make the point, okay? I would always calculate um, how, many, how much fuel that I had left in my tanks. Recalculating. Um, and I would plan my stops according to what I had in my tanks. Um, at the time, as many of you guys know, um, I'll be very honest with you, I've never ran a tractor trailer. My whole career has been thank in, God. Well, my whole career has been in hot shot, um, and um, I've enjoyed every minute of it. And you know, I can't even you know that's the reason why last week we brought Curtis in because it kind of you know eventually we're going to try to bring Casey in too. Yeah, Casey, when are you ready to come in for that visit? Why don't you shoot us a message here so we can kind of get our itinerary ready since he wants to use big fancy words. Yeah, itinerary. But anyways, my it's whole, our itinerary. Whatever. I'm not an English teacher. I'm over here, so let me have my words. Okay. If they're okay. wrong, they're wrong. So be it. But everybody's gonna laugh about it for once. That, well, maybe. I mean, we need some comedy in here. Thank God you have me, because right now you're not the comedy section. I'm not. I'm not the comedy. Everybody, I can tell you that. Um, you know, I'm, I, I, I am not comedy. I, I, I'm not. I can be funny when I need to be, but. Oh, yeah, I remember one night when you were really funny. <laughs> yeah, we're not going there. We're going, we're going to keep your mother out of this, too. Why is everything got to be about my mom, Dan? Just because I tease you about your mom? Yeah. You I heard she was, like, really, really, yeah, back in the day. My mom. You're lucky you were in Indiana and I was in Ohio. Yeah. Mom was oh, in I forgot you came from Mexico, Tijuana. Shut up. So, anyways. All right. So back oh, Casey we're... says whenever. Yeah. We're gonna. We are definitely going to work on getting you in here, Casey. 
Um, I would also like to be able to get Jeff in here because he had the same, he had the same, uh, he did the exact same thing. Um, Bub is comedy relief. Yeah, he is. So. That's just Leanne talking. <laughs> so anyways, um, back to what we were doing. Do you remember where you were at? Um, yeah, I was. In, because he's got the he's got the notes, kids, just like an English yeah. teacher. So everybody was telling me last week. I'm trying to keep this going on. This is this is what happened. This is the reason why I try to I shoot from the hip because for me it just seems like it works a little bit better. But I got notes here. I got all notes, and I don't have the cue cards, but I've got something to follow here. Okay, so. I'm trying to, it's trying to, trying to stay on point, trying to discuss what we've got. And the next thing he needs to do is put the minutes that he needs to put beside each sentence so he doesn't blab good, on. That would probably be a good idea, but anyways. So, so back to what we were talking about. All right, so now the route planning is going to be something that you, you can actually use to save money on fuel, okay? Um, like what I mentioned a few minutes ago. I used to have a laptop and I had the Pilot, the Flying J, and I believe I had Loves at the same time because those were the primary fuel stuffs that I would always stop at. And I'd have them all, I would calculate the fuel usage that my truck was using at that time, which was anywhere between nine and to 11 gallon, uh, uh, miles a gallon. I would calculate how much fuel that I had left in my tanks and I would plan my fuel stops according to what I had in my tanks. Now. If you're running a little bit of a taller load, especially when you're running hot shot, you know as well as I do that it's going to eat up some fuel. So you kind of keep that in the back of your mind so you can give yourself a little bit of a buffer. But nowadays, um, most companies, they have some sort of a fleet card that they can use. And with that fleet card, it, 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 there's a lot of power that goes in with that fleet card. It is something that is incredibly helpful. Sometimes you can buy fuel at the Flying J. Can I put food it. on that fleet card too? No, you cannot. You got it based out? No, it's, uh, our fleet cards do not utilize fuel. Or they, 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 they utilize fuel, they not utilize food. They utilize fuel, but they're not food. So. Brandy says, is there road construction? Do you stay on the same route or try to reroute that's where you hit alexa say reroute well it depends um, but dan's old school way you would have to try to figure out through the mapping and his right. catalog it looks like a sears catalog from back in the day when we used the christmas shop <laughs> did you go to the bra and pain section at that time when you were a kid yeah i was hoping it was gonna be a scratch and sniff but it wasn't oh you're sick dude you're so wrong <laughs> <laughs> When it comes to road construction, it, it yes, it, and, 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 and during that time, um, if you needed a reroute because of road construction, yes. Um, however, it was a little bit more difficult to find out whether or not you had road construction going on. Like right now, you have a lot of apps, and, and even some of the GPSs will come out and say, you know, mile marker 365 or whatever like that, you expect there's going to be road construction for five or six miles. How much does it uh, deal with fuel consumption when you're in road construction? Well, it depends on the severity of the road construction. Um, most generally, it's going to affect your fuel usage a, a bit, not much, um, but it, it definitely can affect it a bit. Um, it's, here, here's the thing. If you have to reroute and get off of a major highway, most generally, you're better off to stay in the road construction and the reason being is, is because the two-lane highway typically has a lot of ups and downs and valleys and whatever. It depends on the area of the country you're in. But for the most part, a two-lane highway is not geared for highway speeds. Um, any one of the guys who run the truck will tell you that there's a speed that their truck gets the optimal fuel mileage. Okay. Um, in some cases, it's 65 miles an hour. Other cases, it's 71 to 72 miles an hour. Um, and it's just because of the way the truck is geared, it gets really good fuel mileage um, at that type of a RPM range. And, you know, that's going to help you out in the, in the intern. So a lot of times it's better just to stay on the highway. Um, now, in some cases, like when you get into larger cities, um, by all means, you're not going to save money on fuel, but you're going to save money on time by deviating. So, does it save you a little bit of money? 
to get off a route. Yes, it, it could, but for the most part, if you're looking at it from just a fuel usage standpoint, just looking at it fuel-wise, for the most part, no, you're not going to save any fuel money by not by going through construction on a major highway. Now, if you deep, like I said, if you deviate, you go onto a two-lane road. Um, yes, that could definitely affect your fuel usage. Um, you can actually go from, you know, some of our trucks get 12, some of our trucks get nine. Um, but if you average it all out, you could go from a 10 mile a gallon truck all the way down to a seven or even a six, depending on the type of terrain that you're going up and down through um, based upon just trying to avoid um, construction. Do you agree with that, Casey? Or do you think, um, or what do, you, what do you think on that? Do you, do you think that's a fair, accurate representation? Yeah, keep going while we wait for him to type. Yeah. So, anyways, all right. So, as far as our fuel cards, what we use, um, we've got a fleet program through um, um, Carrier Pro or um, the RTS uh, Carrier Pro app. Okay, it's a fleet one fuel card. Um, if anybody has any questions about um, needing a, a fuel rep to deal with, I can put you in contact with them. Um, I'm not going to put their name out here right now. Um, It'd be really nice if they had Hardee's at them stations too. Which ones? Wherever I stop and get fuel because Hardee's is well, the bomb. Well, sometimes Hardee's, they did. Uh, some of them do, some of them don't. But Hardee's is not too far into it anymore. But um, So anyways, we use a, what's called a Carrier Pro app. Um, all of our drivers have access to this. And all of our drivers get our, the fuel discounts for any of our fleet um, or owner operator trucks. We pass all those savings down to our operators. Um, we do have the option to go with Combeta. Um, we do not like Combeta. Um, they don't offer enough, for us, they don't offer enough fuel savings. Um, and we, we really do like the Fleet One program. So, um, but here, we wanna go ahead and show you how I would route uh, or do some trip planning. Um, basically, uh, you know, on, on how I would do fuel usage on, on the trucks, um, you know, to plan my trip. So, yeah, there are, there are, try and stay on the highway as much as possible. Going back roads and two-lane highways are a waste of fuel if you need to rig out. Yeah, I, com I completely agree. Um, there are times you have to reroute on a two-lane road, but for the most part, you're better off just to stay on the highways. So let me make sure I've got everything switched over here to this, and I'm going to go ahead and show you a little bit of how our our app works um, for all of our trucks. Um, let me go over here, and we're going to go and we're going to click on this. Okay, so. This is going to look a little bit different um, than what you're going to have. Ooh. Your drivers are going to have. We're in art it, class. It pretty much works identical. Okay. Um, so, anyways, the way I would do it is first of all, I'm going to know the distance of how much, how many miles I'm going to be able to get into or be able to drive before I need to buy fuel. Okay. Or how many hours I have left on my clock. Right, in, in some Thanks, Casey. There is Hardy's just not a lot. That yeah. breaks my heart. Yeah. But Hardy's is great. Oh, know. the Monster really Burger awesome. and the Chicken Filet. Oh my God, extra mayo. Yep. yep. Hey, so, Casey. Sorry, Dan, to cut you off, but right. hey, Casey, you're out there on the road right now with these winds. I don't know exactly where you're at, but how bad is the winds killing your fuel mileage today? If you're in that situation. Mm -hmm. And we're silent. You're changing your routes, developing on what you are moving, depending on the weight of the load. Brandy wants to know. And also, she asks, do you plan out fuel stops around where you can find the cheapest fuel? Yeah, Casey. Casey's at home at the moment. Oh, sorry for that question, then, Casey. Yeah. Um. 
Okay, so Brandy, uh, you change. Okay, so Brandy's got a question of: Do you change your route depending on what you are moving, uh, depending on the weight of the load? Um, the answer to that is, in some cases, yes. Um, that is most prevalent if you're running in mountainous terrain. Um, however, you've got to look at it and see just how much. You've got to kind of calculate it because sometimes you're just going out of route and you're going to save a little bit more money um, by going out of route because you're not going to. But there's times too also where the outer route is just so much that it's, it just doesn't it just doesn't pay to do that. So um, so that's kind of a that's kind of a yes and no answer. Um, a lot of heavy haul guys um, will definitely take different routes and they'll get permitted routes for different areas of the country and they will add some trip miles to it simply because they're trying I mean but that's a t that's a totally different type of scenario though heavy haul guys some of those guys only get like two miles to a gallon I mean I'm not kidding you two miles to a gallon when you're running heavy hauls um, it just it just depends um, on what you've got you know what kind of equipment that's working but um, yes the, the short answer to that is yes you can so Casey says that he's actually at home, like I, we were told by Brandy. Dan is using a truck, blah, 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 to New York. It looks like it says, although I had a pipe load that killed my fuel mileage this week. I mean, like, when you say killed, was it like a massacre, or was it like a mediocre, or, I mean, if you can enlighten us on that a little bit, Casey, please. And then back to your map, Dan. Okay, so now we're back on the map. Now, like I said, we use RTS um, or Carrier Pro. And what we're going to do here is we're going to look at, we're going to do, um, in this example, we're going to use a Hicksville, Ohio trip going down to Houston, Texas. All right. Um, total trip miles you're looking at roughly, let's just call it um, 1,168 miles. Um, I would prefer to go to I-57 route, so that's what I'm going to click on. All right, and now, um, now it gives me a list of all my fuel prices throughout that route. Now, here's the thing: I'm leaving Hicksville. Um, I'm leaving Hicksville, and let's say I've got. Damn, you know, I need a microfine glass to read that. Can you guys see that? Okay, do I need to explain? On that? my left screen, I can't, but my right screen, I can somewhat read it. I'm just getting old, though. I'm sorry. Can, I, can everybody see this screen, or do I? I can all. If I need to, I can open this up just a little bit. I'm going to cut into. Let's try this. Well, while you're doing that, Don writes in and says those pipes typically do cost more on, on fuel, which is why they pay better to offset those costs. Well, thanks for that information, Don. We really like that. And then Curtis, my man that was here last week for the interview, had come in and said, I've been down to five miles to the gallon this week, but I've hauled a container of two pipe loads. It's a struggle if you're talking about fuel mileage. Well, thanks for Curtis for letting us know on this one going on. In case you came back, so I don't have an actual number, but I'd say maybe seven to eight when I usually get 11 to 12. Again, thanks again, Case, on that. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, and and to be frank with you, a lot of the, the numbers are pretty accurate. What there's, I mean, guys, we are looking at close to 50 mile an hour wind gusts. I mean, today was. Today was a nightmare. It's uh, today at lunch, when I was eating my lunch, it actually said on 15 that we were at like 40, 49 mile an hour, and it was going to get worse as the day went on. Really? And that was exactly at like 12.05. Yeah. It, the it, Price it is Right had bad. just went off. Um, I know they had a couple of wind advisories, and I know, you know, the thing is, is the way I look at it is when you get into winds that high, and you... You know, for us, if you've got a heavy, if you've got a tall load, if you have a really tall, hey, um, why, why I'm thinking about it, Curtis, did uh, did the boys get down there and get you squared away? Are you still there? It's fine. I'll I'll let you know when he comes uh, across. Curtis, uh, let me know about that. I'm pretty sure that they did. Um, the winds were so bad today um, that, quite honestly, I, if I was running any, to be, how do I? In some cases, if it was me running the truck, period, um, because the wind was so high today, I probably would have just parked the truck for the day. 
um, the the amount of money and how hard the trucks were working today to, to push against the wind is just it's crazy um, when you get into that kind of wind conditions I don't know even know I don't understand why you know the van guys um, those guys get pushed around all over the place and those guys are still moving up and down the road and they're blowing all over the place and I just I just don't see how how that can be safe but they're still running um, I mean and I get it you know you need you got to get out there and make money and all this other kind of jazz but the fact of the matter is is man um, it just in my opinion of it is is when the winds are that high and when they're blowing you around that much they, I, to me it would just be better for just parking it it's the same way with with any inclement weather or, or snow and ice or anything like that if it's just if it's too bad the truck just doesn't move and if, if customers don't understand that well I you know I don't think I've ever worked with one customer ever one customer that would throw a fit at anybody or any one of my drivers for playing it safe they, they've got a vested interest in keeping us safe just as well as everything else they don't want their product destroyed um, now do they want to know about it yeah but when things are getting so rough out there where it, you just it is not safe to be running down up and down the road I don't care if the state or local governments tell you it's not safe or not that's not their job to sit there and to tell us whether or not it's safe it's our responsibility to pick and choose and to make sure that we do things safely so but anyways um, mm -hmm. back to what I was saying all right so um, so those prices in the green are those gas or diesel prices this is all highway diesel prices okay a dollar 76 in some cases yeah we're using our fuel program now if you're not a part of this program you're not going to probably get these prices you're probably going to end up having to pay full pump price okay so the price gets cheaper the closer you get down to the south uh, a lot of times that is the case yes that closer that is, to the pump it the, can be yes but there you go now we can see better there daniel all right so now what i would do is okay so when i try to pick my fuel stops and casey is really good about this because he he knows exactly what i'm going to say i figure out how many miles that i have left in my tanks I calculate that and I give a good estimate of what kind of mileage that I'm getting for that trip. So for example, if I'm getting 10 miles a gallon and let's say I've got 45 gallons left in my tank, I know I can travel 450 miles max before I'm going to need fuel and to give me a little bit of a buffer, I subtract about 50 miles off of that trip. So then I sit here and I'm saying, okay, well I'm here in Hicksville because that's where our base of operations are. And I'm going to sit there and I'm going to find the cheapest price along this route in order to be able to make it work. So as of right now, it looks like that if you if you scroll in here, and of course I can go over here and I can sort it by um, the nearest distance. Okay, and then if you look, let's see here, it will tell you. Okay, well here I, I'm I'm left in a little bit of a predicament. Um, it doesn't give me the mileage to location but when you use the when you use the app it'll give you the actual mileage to the location of the of the fuel stop so what I would do is I would sort it number one by price and then I would sort it by nearest distance can you actually break that down to how many stops you would have to make to get there I can yes but that's something that um, the wind understandable right yeah so you've got to calculate everything so if I'm looking at 450 miles on the side here I'm going to look for the cheapest price in that 450 mile range or I'm going to calculate 50 miles per hour and let's say you're looking you're going to need like a like a stop let's say you're going to need your 30 minute break um, and you figure 50 miles per hour is what you're what typically is a truck is going to travel down the road that's an average okay just because you're running 70 mile an hour does not necessarily mean you're going to go 70 miles an hour you got to be realistic and typically it's about 50 miles an hour is what you truly average when you're going up and down the interstate okay um, now I know I'm probably gonna get pushback on that but that's the way we calculate it that's the way we look at it so if you're doing 50 miles an hour and you've got to take a break in four hours well you're going to figure you're going, you need to start looking for a place at least 200 miles away all right 
So, and that's going to put you probably around the Evansville area, maybe a little bit. Evansville, or Indiana. Or Terre Haute. Um, so you're going to want to look for a place around here. Now, if you look, here's, here's a perfect example. I said roughly two hours. And if you take a look from Hicksville, which, it's, which I think is probably going to be you know, a little bit more than that. But if you take a look right here. You got a you got a carrier pro that's two seventeen a gallon. That's what we cover. That's what we pay for our fuel at that location. Okay. Now it may not be a pilot. It may not be a flying J. It may not be a loves. But we get it for two seventeen a gallon. Okay. And I'm going to do that for the whole entire trip. And uh, you know, and I'm going to sit here and I'm going to plan each one of these trips. And I'm going to try to make sure that I get the lowest price for fuel along that trip. Brandy. But go ahead. Okay, so Brandy asks, okay, when it's windy, does the type of hitch make a difference in fuel mileage and overall? Um, the short answer to that is for the most part, no. However, if the hitch is not set up properly, the equipment's not going to ride level, which is going to cause a decrease in fuel mileage. So what you typically want to do is when the truck is empty, you want to have it kind of bowed up and when it's loaded you want to bring it down to where it's basically a, just a touch kind of sagging in the middle just just a bit not much and then proper load placement has a major factor huge factor of how how you how you fuel mileage it is how you do in fuel mileage it's a huge factor Is that um, Warren Travel Center? I, I go there all the time. I don't. I don't know. Let Let's take Let's take a look here. Let's see where it is. It doesn't. Well, let's just click on it. Nope. It's um. Well, it could be. Um. It's a small. It's a small filling station. Um. It only has two showers and it's got thirty parking spots. So it's it's a decent. It's a decent little. What do they got for food? Obviously, I'm hungry. Everybody. Sorry. Yeah. Well, it's got a lounge and whatnot. Now, it may not be the best fuel. It may not be the best. Um, it may not be the best filling station in the world, of course. But for the most part, two seventeen a gallon right now. That's not a bad price. That's, well, gas in Defiance is like one ninety, one ninety five. Well, that's you're talking gas. That's I know, but your diesel prices are going to be down. Gas prices are down. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then if you look on here, and there's another one right here that's going to be a little bit off a of route, which is going to be at 218 a gallon. Now, this is how guys, number one, this is something that a lot of guys typically don't understand. Um, okay, so I've mentioned this time and time again. Fuel usage is based on averages. Okay, the cost of fuel is an average. Just like everything else in trucking, it's all about averages. Okay. If you can lower your overall average cost of fuel by 30 cents a gallon, you're saving yourself considerable amounts of money. Considerable amounts of money. Let's say, for example, you save yourself, let's say you burn through, let's say, let's say 300 gallons of diesel a, a week. This is even going to be even more when you run, when you run a tractor. I mean, some of these guys use fuel, guys. I mean, lots of fuel. So let's say you know you're doing a let's let's say you're saving yourself thirty cents a gallon, and you're buying a hundred gallons of fuel. Well, right there you're saving yourself thirty bucks, dude. That that's meals, that's hotel rooms, stuff like that. I mean thirty bucks. Well, if you're doing three and four fill ups, I mean hell, that's one hundred and twenty dollars. You're saving yourself every single week, and even in some cases more. So using this kind of method actually can save you a considerable amount of money and that will go into your back pocket now the great thing about us is we pass these savings directly down to every one of our drivers that you don't have if you're an owner operator and you're you know there's other companies out there that will not give you your fuel savings and this is something that you got to be mindful of but with us you get these fuel savings we will always pass them along to our drivers. We will never take that money that's not rightfully ours. You guys need to have that. So 
you know, granted, this stuff changes all the time. You can't go off of this day, day after day after day after day after day because these things change. That's why you've got an app on your phone and you need to, you need to trip plan this. This can save you some serious money, guys. This can save a lot of money. So, so anyways, that's what I would do. I'd calculate your miles. I know I'm getting off topic here and I've spent 47 minutes on this. I'm, I'm trying. And You're doing better. You're doing really good. I hope so. I'm trying. So, you know, if you if you guys just do this and you and you and you work it that way, you're going to save a boatload of money on fuel. You just are. Um, and then you just calculate it every single day, every single and and you know, like for a hot shot rig, if you're running an auxiliary tank, you're going to be able to run probably 12, 1500 miles, give or take, between fill ups. Well, you know, let's say for example, you get this, and let's say you fill up here. You go all the way down. I, oh, I'm moving this around I'm on the wrong screen. Let's say you, let's say you take that same mentality and you fill up. Let's say you fill up at 217 a gallon right there. You have maxed out all your tanks. All right. Then you go all the way down here to Texas. Let's just go down here, which has got some of the cheapest fuel in the country for the most part. And let's say you hit this down here where it says, well, look at this, $1.88 a gallon. Told you. You max out. You literally load up on all the fuel that you can get. Now you just got enough fuel to complete your trip, go and make your delivery, probably get reloaded, and start heading back north. Now, if you don't want to get it here at a dollar eighty-eight a gallon, you go down here and right around Houston and get it for a buck eighty-five. You just save yourself a crap ton of money in buying fuel. I mean, it is, it's common sense, guys. I don't. The way I look at things, I don't really give a crap. I don't care about the amenities. I don't care about anything else. I care about whatever makes the most amount of money for that truck. If you have the mentality where you just want to go to a petro and uh, yeah and a fuel cell was definitely would definitely be good and uh, casey i know we've talked about that a couple of times and there's a reason why we haven't done it just yet i'll explain a little bit later on, on that but for us i get it fuel cells or the auxiliary tanks are a great way to make this work okay and you can save yourself so much money it's not even funny and if you do this consistently day in day out religiously every single week um you're, you're, you're going to see it in your bottom line it, it, it will and because it's a cum, cum, cumulative cum, cumulative effect it just it helps out tremendously okay so can i touch bait can i ask a question about the fuel cell yeah it'd go in the bed right going what it goes in the bed of the truck right it can go in the bed yes so if a driver adds that and fills it up and jackknifes it, will it hit it? No. However, There'll be enough he room. Does, Bob does bring up a good point. So here's one of the things you got to worry about when you operate a fuel cell. Um, number one, they've got to be rated. Um, they have to have a, uh, a decal on the fuel cell. Um, and typically it's a good idea. Uh, some of them come with a kind of like a just an, a, an actual decal. Um, it's a really good idea to have them actually have a welded plate on the fuel cell um, that shows the date of manufacture. Um, it has to have the overall gallons that it can hold, and then um, I believe the serial number of it, and it has to be registered. Okay, as long as it meets those criteria, it's legal. If you do not run it and it doesn't have any of that stuff you are at a possibility of getting a citation um, they don't look at it all the time the thing is though is technically by law it's not supposed to be in your truck unless it has those particular um, markings on it just hopefully you don't get pulled over by a guy with a dot that's having a bad day They're having a bad day I and mean, they, they do do that now here's another thing though okay there are a bunch of different auxiliary tanks that you can get, okay? Number one, don't go any larger than 105 or 100, I think it's 110 gallons. If you have anything larger than 110 gallons, I believe it's 110, I'm going to have to look at that. It's, it's 110, 
I believe it's 110. Anything larger than a 110 gallon tank, anything larger is considered hazmat and you actually have to run a placard on it. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's a fax, okay? Because it's not standardized equipment that was actually installed in the unit. Like if you get a tractor, like a normal semi-tractor, and let's say it's got 300 gallon tanks, let's say it's, it's got 150 gallon tanks, and it came from the manufacturer that way, you're not required to have a hazmat unless you're carrying hazmat stuff. But if you're running a hotshot rig and you put it in the back end of a pickup truck and it's, let's say you get a, a, a 200 gallon tank, if you could fit one in there, I don't think you could, but let's say you get a 200 gallon tank, the DOT is going to look at you and you're going to have to have a hazmat license just to have that and it's going to have to be placard because it's not original equipment on the truck. So, so <clears throat> to Casey and and the guys that are out there driving for you, when they get pulled over for DOT inspections or whatever, weight stations, I'm sure they have to hit weight stations every once in a while, do they or not? Yeah, every one of our trucks. Do they test the for uh, dye in diesel? Yes, they absolutely do. Um, they basically, they do what's called a stick. And um, basically it's a little bit of a, a glue that goes, not a glue, but it's like a, it's like a paste that goes at the end of the stick. If it turns a certain color, it's non dyed and dyed. It's non dyed diesel. It's and you will be fine and they will shut you down. Yeah, it's just kind of like the same paste that you use if you have water in your gas tank. If you, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. Sorry for cutting you off on some of those. I just thought those might have been some good questions. That's okay. It, it works out pretty good. Um, so that, that gives you a little bit of a rundown of how to use the fuel, how to use the fuel card, um, and stuff like that. Um, if, if any of our guys have any questions in regards to this, if anybody has any questions about, you know, how to use this or a, a better explanation, um, you know, by all means, give me a call and let me know, and I'll try to I'll try to work with you, and I'll sit down and try to show you because you know I want you guys to be able to use this. That's the reason why our company has this. We want you guys to be able to save money on fuel because it makes us more competitive and it makes you more competitive. Um, it's something that's very needed and you know, and if, if there's anything better that's out there, by all means, let me know. Um, cause I want to save money. I want to save all the guys as much money on fuel as I possibly can. Cause it's a major expense. It just, it's one of those things you, you got to do. So, um, so anyways, we're going to go ahead and move on now, um, from that. And I think you guys kind of get an idea of how, how, this is supposed to be done. Um, like I said, if you have questions, feel free to give me a call and then we'll go from there. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and move back here so I can actually open up something else. Um, there we go. Okay. So now once you have those, um, once you have those fuel stops planned, okay. Um, Casey says he's never been tested. He says that he uses it every trip. It's, it's easy to use. Don writes in, does it cost any fees or anything to use the fuel card? Yes, um, that is one thing um, that we are currently working on. Um, for us, there are fees to use the fuel card. Um, and each station um, varies to some sort of degree. Um, but for the most part, the short answer to that is yes. Um, there are some small fees that are associated with using the fuel card. Um, there are some things I can't really touch on now because of our contract with them. Um, but in due time, we're going to try to get the, all those fees completely 100% waived. I can't do that right now, but we're working towards that. A lot of that is going to be dependent on... Um, to put things in perspective, a lot of that's going to be dependent upon our fleet count and how much fuel usage that we go through. Um, a lot of a lot of stuff that goes on with the fuel card is based off of the volume of fuel that you purchase as a whole in a company. So there's going to be like I'm sure somebody's going to probably talk to me and say, "Well, I can't get that rate or whatever." Okay. And that's true. Some some of you may, um, and I'm talking from outside carriers, and because there's, I think last week we had like almost like 
26,000 people that looked at some of these videos. And um, the issue that we've got is not everybody's gonna be able to get those rates, and those rates are not for everybody. It's based upon the type of fuel usage that a particular company is getting. Um, we also have been contacted by Pilot, Flying J, and Loves. At this point in time with our fuel usage, we can't get anything better. Um, but one of those um, issues that we've got with the Carrier Pro at the moment is there's a potential that we could get a lot of the fees completely um, um, taken care of. And basically we won't have, we'll have a very minuscule fee that's on it, but it's based upon the fuel usage. Um, I don't want to get into that of, of how many gallons of fuel that we have to go through per month or per quarter. Um, but it is definitely something that we are working on. And the larger our fleet becomes, the more competitive pricing that we can actually obtain for the, the, the carrier, uh, the carrier program. Um, so. As Dawn says, there's more people using, there are less fees. If, if, well, it's not the volume of people, it's the volume of gallons that you have to work with. So if you're going through, <coughs> for example, um, if you're going through 10,000 gallons a month, um, because you're purchasing much more volume of fuel through that card, the fees could, that, that's basically a negotiation for you to be able to reduce the fees on that particular card. And also it gives you, because you're buying a lot more fuel, you see, because you're buying a lot more fuel, the filling stations want you to go there to buy their fuel, okay? And if you're buying a crap ton of fuel, at that location, well, that means that you're spending more money at that centralized location or that particular truck stop. So they give us deeper discounts on that, and it just depends. Um, that's the reason why there are a lot of companies out there that have specific fuel stops that a lot of their, their companies want you to go to. It's because they're getting incredibly deep discounts on that fuel for that particular location because they have some sort of a contract that they're going to buy or go through so many gallons of fuel which basically means the driver is going to be stuck there at that truck stop, or they or they have other opportunities to sell other things in that truck stop to the driver, to the company, or whatnot. Okay, um, just how it works. So, so anyways, um, back to what we we're doing, and uh, hopefully I'm not rambling on, but I, I kind of I don't know. It kind of feels like I am. So everyone should use the fuel card so it automatically saves all the drivers more money on the fuel, Don Evans says. Yeah, you're exactly right. Um, I think a lot of the guys who don't use a fuel card really just don't. I don't know why they wouldn't. Um, but, yeah, I mean, in a short answer, yes. It over, In general, it's going to help out the company as a whole. Not, not only is it going to help out the driver by himself, but it's also going to help out the company as a complete whole. It's, it's just, yes, that is a fact. That, that, is, that is definitely a fact. It's the same thing that happens with insurance, too, um, which I'm, that, I don't want to get in down onto that. Um, I don't want to get onto that con topic of conversation, but the short answer to that is done, yes. It, absolutely, it does, yes. So anyways, let's go ahead and move on here. All right, so we've done the estimate. Um, uh, we've done that, and then we're going to, okay, so after you've done all that, and I know I've, I've taken a mile to get to something that normally takes five minutes once you get everything established. Um, you're gonna confirm with the receiver. Um, you're gonna physically pick up the phone. You're gonna call them, and you're gonna say, hey, Bob, Tim, Jerry, Greg, you said Bub. Bub, whatever. You're going to call them up and say, hey, my name is Dan Stouffer, or my name is Casey. Marshall Marthers. Marshall Marthers, or whatever. You're going you to know who them. that is? I have no idea who it is. It's Eminem. Hello, my name is. Oh, okay. My That's name cool. Is. All right. Um, but anyways, um, you're going to pick up the phone. You're going to call them, and you're going to say, hey, I got this order for you guys. And you're going to do it in a much more professional manner than what I'm doing right now. Say, hey, my name is Dan Stouffer. Um, I'm with I, FLQ Transportation Group. Damn. And man. I'm looking to make a delivery um, at noon on Friday. 
um, and this is the type of material that I have. I've got some plate steel that we've got bring, that we're bringing you. Um, just wanted to confirm: Are you the correct person I need to contact in order to make this delivery? Um, there's a lot of guys out there who don't make calls, but you should. It helps out tremendously. Not only does it help you in the end, um, it can save you valuable amounts of time in some cases, and then other cases it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. What happens when you say you're going to be there on a certain time and you don't make it there on time? Okay, so that's a good question, Bob. All right, so let's say, for example... Let's say I said I was going to be there at noon, 1 o'clock. Okay, well, this is what, what I'm going to do as a customer. So I'm going to kind of act like a customer right now. So let's say you say you're going to be here at noon. I'd be like, is this Dan? Um, I'm supposed to be there. I'm going to try to be there about noon, 1 o'clock. How's that sound? Pretty much. Okay. Sounds good. All right, so now, if you're going to be late, and you know you're going to be late, then you pick up the phone. You Give them a jingle and say, hey. You just let them know. Be cordial about it and say, look, I, I got stuck, I, or I had a tire issue that put me behind a couple of hours, and because of that, I'm not going to be able to make my delivery at noon, okay? And I know I just told you I was going to be there at noon, but you got to let them know. So you, just, you need to let them know. I mean, that's, that is one of the most important things that we do, so... And, and Don's right. You want to try to give them some sort of a buffer in there to give you a little bit more time. Exactly. So. So you always want to say, like, I'm going to be there between 12 and 1, but actually show up about 11 or maybe 10.30? Well, no, not necessarily. It depends. You have well. That's better, though. Well, it, sometimes it is. But you've also got to take in consideration. Oh, have, shit. That forklift driver's on lunch. Right. The forklift driver's on lunch. Or... For example, what happens if they have to order any equipment to offload you, which happens a lot? Well, they should have known that from the get-go, from the status. They should, of, but you would be surprised I mean, if, how many people don't have the equipment on site, and they're basically renting the equipment to offload the truck. And they're renting it at a limited basis because they don't want to spend the money exactly. for it. Exactly. So you you got to keep all that in mind. So... Um, Brandy asks, do you have a requirement to purchase a set amount of gallons per month as a company to use a card? The short answer to that is, in our situation, yes. We do have a minimal that we have to hit every month for that particular fuel card to get, this, to get and to give our drivers the particular savings that they're getting now at certain fuel stations. That is correct. We do have to go through so many gallons of fuel for a particular, um, not at a particular station, but we have to go through it as um, through the Carrier Pro side of things. Um, they require us to go through an X amount of fuel, which I'm not going to disclose. Um, that's, that's our personal contracts and stuff like that. I'm not going to go into that. But yes, that is, that is part of it. Oh man, look at an eight head right there. See. When you call ahead of time, you find out if it is FCFS or if you need. Yeah, I wasn't going to read that one. I wasn't going to touch that one with a five foot pole because I didn't know if FCFS was something that was legit or shorthand. And since you're trucking background, well, you might know. FCFS is a first come, first serve basis. Okay. Um, and you're right, sometimes you can be in a situation like that um, where you are in FCS, FS situation. Most generally though, when you run shot, you're, you're not typically in that. However, every now and then you run into it, but it's definitely a good idea to call to make sure that all that is squared up and done. <clears throat> all right, after you've confirmed that with your receiver, you know everything is good, you've got all your trip plans, you know where you're gonna get your fuel, et cetera, et cetera. Um, then you put the truck in drive and you hit your fuel stops. You make it all work. You get it all done. Um, final thing though, this is one thing that a lot of people don't do and this is something that you really need to take into a uh, good consideration is once you deliver the load, it's a great idea to pre-plan where you're going to be going next. I. I don't know how many times somebody's called me up and sit there and saying, well, I've got this load that I'm delivering and I'm going to be out of hours. Well, why didn't you plan for that? 
you know how many hours it's going to take you to get to a location. You can give yourself some sort of a time frame or guideline to follow in order to be able to make that happen. You can't sit there and just, I'm going to deliver and oh my God, I don't know what I'm going to do next. Are you going to go to a fuel stop? Are you going to go to a truck stop? Are you going to go to a rest area? What are you doing? What are you doing? Um, you, you need to know of some kind, some way to make that work. So. What number are you on? Um, that is number eight, and I believe that is everything that I think is a valid point on this. Did I cover everything fairly decent? Don, do you think I did okay on this? Casey, how'd I do? I know we're over an hour on this, and I'm trying to do this in an hour, but... We've been over every time. It's okay. Know. They like us that much. I don't know if they like us. I don't know. We're down. We're down to like three people. It's down, well, that's what Facebook is saying. I don't know how many we've got on all the other platforms. but you know, What other platforms are we on? We're on uh, three other places right now. Well, that's nice to know that after four weeks in and I'm just not being told this. <laughs> Maybe I didn't want to be on that platform. So anyways, um, next week, um, I want to wish everybody, if you're not going to be here, I completely understand. Next week is going to be Thanksgiving. Um, I want to uh, I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Um, I will still be doing a live stream on. Uh, what a dedicated and, dude! Um, I haven't decided what we're going to do yet. It's going to be probably a minimal. <coughs> well, I'm going to tell you guys something. We're going to have a. Here, here, here's what we got going down. All right, it, it's it's going to be new and approved. Tell all your buddies, spread the word, share this thing like it's all over the place. We got something that's going to be explosive instead of this, whatever you want to call this black thing behind me. It's going to be great. I put my material and time into this. It's going to blow your minds. We're going to be live. And when I say live, it's going to be electrifying and it's going to be live. It's going to be pretty interesting. We do have a few things that are coming up that are, it's going to bring kind of a, it's going to make the show a little bit interesting. Um, it's going to take a little bit of the uh, English teacher off the mind when you see what's going to happen. Uh, yeah, we're hopeful, hopefully, that's the plan anyways. So. No, it, it's going to happen. It should have been done today, but it didn't happen. Yeah. At least my side should have been done. Yeah. I worked two nights on this and I should have had it. It was all because of Leanne and her brilliant idea that saved us <laughs> from spending money that we wanted to spend. Yeah. But, but uh, who else is going to have a great turkey day out there? Are you going to send some recipes our way? How about some pecan pie? Pecan pie. Oh, man, I don't know. It's I, not pecan. It's pecan. I don't know. If I, I don't know. Pecan pie is okay. It's not my It's favorite. pecan. You give me a good cheesecake, a good cherry cheesecake that's been oh. homemade. Oh, my God. No, no, I got I got the bomb one for you. What you got? Peanut butter pie. That is. Oh, Amish I about, made. I about, I about said a bad word. It's pretty damn amazing. Amish made peanut butter yeah. pie. Yeah. I, the one thing that I miss is my grandma's cherry cheesecake without the cherries, just the red sauce on the top. Mm. I know that don't make no sense at all, but that was the way it was made. Yeah, Brandy, um, you're right. Um, we are going to be changing that up. Um, we are that's going to be part of what we've got coming up um some of that stuff is going to be changing um it's going to be great fellows i'm telling you ladies and gentlemen you invite everybody bring them out for the show it's going to be a light show it's going to be great we're going to blow the doors off this place pumpkin cheesecake is actually pretty good i've had that before i'm my wife understands that we cannot have thanksgiving without Fruit pizza and cherry cheesecake. What is fruit pizza? I've never heard of it. And I'm telling you what. If people don't like uh, pineapple on pizza, they shouldn't have a fruit pizza then. Yeah, apple pie, warm apple pie, and some vanilla ice cream. Now, Excellent. Love that too. Casey, that apple pie with vanilla ice cream, is that the apple pie you drink or the apple pie that you eat? <laughs> because I'm down with both at the both same time. Both of them are pretty damn good at the same time. <laughs> Man, we're getting more comments talking about food. Maybe we're fat guys and should be talking about I food know. shows yeah, and stuff, you know. But keep the questions coming. Yeah, yeah. 
I don't know why Leanne got a freaking thumbs up for fruit pizza. What the heck kind of comments that? Because fruit pizza is actually really good. It Sorry, Brian. Really I didn't mean to hurt your feelings on that. <laughs> you kind of was typing when I said that. My bad. <laughs> fruit pizza is awesome. Um, it depends on how it's made, though. Um, it, sometimes you can put there. Some you can go too sugary in it. What is fruit pizza? I mean, is it just a pizza pie with nothing but fruit? You forget the spaghetti no. sauce or the the so pizza sauce and pepperoni. Pizza, fruit pizza. Leanne, correct me if I'm wrong. Brandy, correct me if I'm wrong. But it's sugar cookie dough with um, with uh, uh, what is it? Uh, sugar and cream cheese. And um, you love it, but you don't even know what's on it. I don't have to know what's in it. I just eat it because it's freaking phenomenal. You know what? We're talking about all these sweets. You know what the best Thanksgiving dinner thing is? What's my that? mama makes this for me. It's gizzards. Yuck. Oh, my God, gizzards. <coughs> Anybody else out there like gizzards? I bet all you guys hit the truck stops and get some gizzards. Gizzards are nasty. Uh, no, no way. Nah. Oh, I'm no telling you, what, I've, I had some truck stop gizzards here in Napoleon, Ohio. They're pretty good. I stop when I come from Tweeda every once in a while, but my mama's gizzards are the bomb. Are you a big turkey guy? Do you like a lot of turkey? I'm not much of a turkey guy at all. Yeah, me neither. I, I'm more of a ham. I like ham. I like my I like my cucumber salad with mayonnaise and onions, and I like my homemade uh, potato salad my mom makes. She makes homemade pasta salad. We have we don't have a traditional Thanksgiving dinner. We just make what all the it's me and my brother, and then as growing up and then she just makes our favorites and then the rest of the family come over and we eat it you know gizzards was my favorite growing up and and taco salad was his and and then we have homemade fried chicken and and then we have some stuffing and some amish breaded noodle or not breaded noodles but i don't know what kind of noodles they are but they're they're darn good yeah. there ain't too much desserts though just jello for the kids i think next week um for thanksgiving um you know, I appreciate everybody showing up. Um, if you do show up, that's great. But next week, I think um, I'm going to probably have um, a brisket. I don't know if I'm going to do brisket next week. We're having a brisket. Leanne was talking about it earlier. I, I just don't. I don't know if I want to do that or not. Um, but anyways, for next week, next next cast that we're going to do, I will be here next week. Um, hey, I'm not expecting Bub to be here next week because of the holidays. But real quick, though, before I sorry to cut you off again, I'm good at that. I'm you like are. a stoplight. Man, I'm telling you, what, you're like so, a train wreck. quick feeling, feeling out there, people. Um, are you guys all gonna be going to your uh, families for Thanksgiving with that this COVID nineteen stuff, or what is are you gonna going for Thanksgiving? That 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 is an excellent question because you have some people who aren't doing anything, and then you have other people that's like, I'm going to do whatever the hell I want to do. What what is everybody doing? Yeah, let's get some quick answers there. I mean, I know there's a lot of people that are going to still go see their families and stuff, but. But anyways, back on this food situation, I'm hungry. You know, I think Leanne's got spaghetti making. He'll be, Casey says he'll be free. I mean, as far as uh, he's going to his families or he's just staying at home. I don't understand what that means. That's what he means. He'll probably be, he'll probably just be staying around the house. Oh, Brandy says dressing is better than stuffing. Man, I'll tell you what. Don, shocking that you love chicken livers and gizzards, but gizzards are better than livers. Family gathering on Sunday. Yep. I understand. I understand. Yep. Yep. My biggest our, my biggest thing is, is uh, with my family, we all live in the same town, but with me and my brother our jobs we travel to other areas and sometimes we get into the icky areas right now and it's a little scary to maybe pass something on if you maybe get it so i have already told my mother as much as i hated to do it that i'm probably going to elect just to stay home for the sheer fact of what we're dealing with right now at my workplace the way I'm looking at it is if we, um, it depends um, on our Thanksgiving on Thursday. Um, I'm going to be going over to Sandra's. Which is my Sandra's mom. house. Maybe Sandra will give however, me an invite. However, however, 
Um, we are going to, if, if we do have, now the guys have got to get a hold of me prior to this, but if the guys want to stop in on Thanksgiving, um, my door it will be open on Thanksgiving Day for um, the drivers if they want to come in and have a Thanksgiving dinner with me. Oh man, you should see the size of this brisket. I need to know a prior because, um, you know, Thanksgiving is a, uh, this year is a lot different because you have to worry about the COVID situation. I'm not going down that road, but there are people that feel about COVID a lot differently than other people. And I'm going to sit here and say that um, for me, um, if you're interested in coming to my house and um, want to sit down and have some Thanksgiving dinner with me um, or my wife and myself and uh, my kids, um, I'm not going to stop you from doing that. And quite honestly, I'm going to welcome it. Um, I think this Thursday on this next podcast, uh, or I call it a podcast. It's not necessarily a podcast. It's a, it's a live, I guess. I'm it's Facebook Live. Whatever. Um, I am. Um, Are you just going to be down to earth and just talk? I'm going to be honest with you. I think. I think this year. Um, this year has been incredibly hard on a lot of people. Um, I think this year has been pretty hard on myself, my wife, um, my kids. Um, it's it's been a it's been a rough year, um, but um, we still have a lot to be thankful for. Um, I'm thank very thankful for a lot of my good friends, and I think next week I think we're going to kind of dive into a little bit of that stuff. Um, I'm going to try to have um, I'm going to try to attend. I haven't figured out how I'm going to do it yet, but. I want to be able to get, um, get get a lot of the drivers involved because unfortunately sometimes they've got to be out on the road. Um, it's part of the lifestyle. This is part of the industry that we're in. Not everybody can be home for the holidays. Um, we want to try to get them home and be with their families as much as possible. Um, but unfortunately that's not how it works out in every single case and there's a lot of drivers that are out on the road um, that um, you know that 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 need to have somebody to talk to on that on those particular types of days. So I think next week um, that's what I'm going to end up doing. Um, and if, if anybody wants to join me, they're more than welcome to. Um, if you want to be live on the on the live stream, um, of course we're going to have to have some sort of delay or something like that. Um, Are we going to have commercial breaks? Probably no commercial breaks. Uh, although. If we do, if we do, if we do smoke a brisket, um, if we do get a brisket smoked next week, um, I'll probably, I don't know yet. I, ha I haven't really decided on it yet. But, um, I don't know what you just did, but you turned not to be a ghost again. I turned not. It's, beca it's because. No, no, you flipped a switch over there. No, I did not. I it's flipped this. a switch. It's, it's right now. You know, Brandy, everything you on your list sounds really, really good except for the green bean casserole. I love green bean casserole. It's uh, not made right, though. No. The French onions have got I to be crispy. Don't even it love the... Soggy. Don't even love the smell of green beans. Hate them. I love green beans. Green beans are freaking bomb. They are the absolute bomb. Freaking amazing. Leanne says some of them choose to be out during holidays. Yeah, but I think overall, Leanne, I mean, realistic nature of it is... It's okay, there, Leanne, I'll be here for you. Yeah, there are some people who do choose to be out during the holidays, but the fact is, is most generally, there's a lot of guys who don't want to be out over the holidays, and you can't blame them, um, I mean, especially when you're living in a truck, so uh, you take that back, bro. <laughs> what, what up, me, or what? Uh, I think it was about me, uh -huh. or the green beans, I don't know. Uh -huh. So, but, um, hey, Casey, are you going to be on the road next week? I can't remember. Oh, no. At home, no family get together. Yeah, green bean casserole is. is okay, I'll take it back for you, Casey. I haven't even met the man yet, but green I'll take bean it back. Casserole is the bomb. But the thing is, though, is you can't. I don't. I like it with the. the um, you got to have the French onions on top that are, that are, that are, that are crispy. 
You can't even cook it in my house because it just the smell makes me You're disgusting. Really I hate my mother used to force me to eat green beans. That's why I hate it. So is there any drivers out there that can comment if we go off live that would be interested on in being here to be on a live on Thanksgiving Day with us? Well, I mean, number one, I'm not asking Bub to be here. Bub does an amazing job. I, I really do appreciate Bub. No, I don't. He wants to retire is what he says. I'm ready to retire. He's ready to retire. Um, I do like having Bub added to the show because, you know, I'm not a very comical individual. And he brings a lot of comedy to it. And yeah, comedy. nice try. Um, but at the same time, um, Bub's got his own family that he has to work with and be a part of. And I'm not going to take that away from him. So um, I appreciate everything Bub does, and, and but I'm not going to expect him to be here next I'm going to be here for the couple of these light shows that are about to happen. I'm so excited about this. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you what you're about to see and witness is going to be mind-blowing. Yeah, I'm probably being a little sarcastic, but it's going to be great compared to what you're looking at now. It, it <laughs> I mean, would. not personally. I mean, I'm not going to change my appearance or anything, but what's going to happen could be really, really great. Well, and it's going to really lighten Dan up a little bit. You know, his appearance is going to change an awful lot. Trust me. Yeah. So. I want to know who has the best Hicksville hat. Model this sucker. Which one? This one. Okay, well, I like this hat. That this, one. This Hicksville hat. This is this is freaking awesome. It's a little a little loose though. I like my camo hat better though. I really do. I just really despises me that you wore Hicksville, and you know I wore my Eagles last night. I wasn't wearing my Eagles. safety greens. Wait, wait, wait. What? Who's Eagles? Let's yeah, see. my Eagles suck. They got beat by the Giants. It's okay. But you know what? We're still in first place. Wouldn't that be great? The Eagles are in first place. They're like got the losing record. They're they're probably gonna go to the playoffs. Possibly oh, still go man. to the playoffs. No, hold on, listen. No. Possibly still go to the playoffs. And if they get to the playoffs, there is a slim chance that they might get better. Very slim, like my fingernail, that they could go into the playoffs and make a run for the Super Bowl. But hear me out, people. If they make the playoffs and they get some wins and they go to the Super Bowl and win it with a losing record, could still possibly have a top 10 pick. How does that happen in the NFL? That is very uncommon. First of all, first of all you just need to call it COVID. This year, I, I don't even know how. Can you seriously even have a Super Bowl this year? I mean, really. Can you even have a Super Bowl this year? I, don't, I mean, how, how would you even have a Super Bowl? I don't think it's going to happen. They've already – the Eagles probably won't make the playoffs, not to go back to that situation, because the NFL already said if this COVID-19 breaks out that they're going to go to their modified playoff situation. Okay. So they were basically hoping that they probably get the COVID-19 so that the Eagles won't be in the playoff situation because they have a losing record. You know, because they're going to, they opened it up, but they have also got a loophole in there this year for the COVID-19 case. And believe me, as much of an Eagles fan as I am, they suck. Careful. Beep! Right now. So. Oh, we got some things on here. I'm with Bub Pass on the green bean casserole. <laughs> Casey said, get some ring lights. Oh, this ain't TikTok, Casey, sorry. Uh, the ring lights would actually work. We do have lights that are ordered. Um... The problem is, is we're running into a lot of, it's so tight in here that it, it's very difficult to be able to get everything in, in here and, and make it work. So we're trying, I'm, I'm trying to do the better, best of that I can. And um, Well, hopefully for the two guys stuck in a basement filming, we're not kind of those two guys filming, if you know what I mean. Um, I got a great source for LED lighting that if uh, Dan would like to hook that up, we could get to some LED lighting and put it in here besides these three light bulbs that we have. Well, it, it really looks dark, but it's really, to me, it's really not that dim. Anymore. I don't understand why I'm so bright over here. Yeah. yeah. So. Anyways, I think that's probably going to be uh, the end of it for tonight. I know we've carried on a lot. Um, 
I think the last 30 minutes has been the best part of the show. To be honest with you, I think so, too. I mean, this, see, this is the way we need to talk. I mean, instead of you just going over there, well, we need to go back to the map, and then we have to go down to this station instead of this station. And, and we really could get it for this way, and then we can get it for this way. Really talk that way. I mean, in a case, yeah, yeah, pretty much. I'm thinking, yeah. I mean, have you not seen my face staring at you through the podcast or Facebook Live when you're talking? I'm like, okay, boring, sleeping. Look who just showed up. Is that Steve? I want to be a man. Look at you come in, Steve. I want to be a man. Two men in a basement. Interesting conversation starter. Yeah. Well, I am not in the spotlight. It kind of looks like that he is, doesn't it? Because it, it, on my side of things, it looks like Bubs. Uh, so, do you guys want to hear me talk during the show instead of Dan then? Probably. Because that's not going to happen. Let me tell you that right now. <laughs> You're 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 famous, bub. <laughs> I'm Facebook famous. You're famous, dude. You're famous. No, it's not just Facebook. Not well, Facebook. I forgot you put me on two other outlets. Next week we will probably. Am I on fans only? No, not yet. Oh, what is that? Anyways, I have no idea what that is. Uh, I hear everybody talk on TikTok about fans only, and then people get up and go clean their rooms and stuff. Yeah. Is it good or bad? I don't, honestly, I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah, you're a little late, Steve. We should be off the air, but we waited for Steve. I want to be a man to get on here and talk. So. Don says, yes, he does. Looks like he is. Yeah. What's that mean? Uh, in the spotlight. No. So. No, I'm not. Anyways, guys, um, I'm probably not going to be in the office tomorrow. Uh, I've got to run out to um, Hamilton, New York, I believe is what they're calling Remember right off the top. Oh, so I have to come down and talk to your wife tomorrow in the office? Yeah, come down and, and talk to Leanne in the morning. Um, That's not going to be in the morning. In the afternoon. Yeah. So, um, but uh, anyhow, guys, um, we're going to call it a night. We and, are? Uh, yeah. Why? We're, we're just like, I bet we got, well, we got five people now. Well, it shows five. Does anybody else want to talk about anything, or are we going to cut it right now? Well, I think it's, it, dude, it's a 730. We've been at this for an hour and a half. I know things are going great, but man, I'm just like, we gotta kind of, gotta kind of get it back down to like a, like a reasonable hour. With what you talk about, dude, I'm long-winded. I, with I what you really talk about in that hour, oh my God, we only made it to two truck stops instead of all thirty of them that we were supposed to hit to get to it Texas. Wasn't thirty that we were? First of all, you don't need to go to thirty different. Well, well, you had thirty freaking truck stops up there. I counted them. Those were those were different truck stops. Well, it doesn't matter. Then don't put them all on there. I can't change that. Leanne says New York City. I'm going to New York City. And you're going to bring us the COVID back, aren't you? Yeah, hopefully it's not going to be that bad. So. But you had 30 freaking truck stops up there with 30 different gas prices. Well, no, they weren't all 30 different. They were all pretty much the same. Well, yeah, you have to pick and choose which ones you're going to go to. That's the that's the reason why you root plan. But you spent 30, 35 minutes on that subject. Well, you should I have made it an hour? You almost did. Shut up. No. Yeah. I can't do that. That's going to bore people. I can't do that. Look. You did done bore people. I, I, okay. Oh, did you see that dust there? I just felt the daggers. I think... Hey, Scotty, beam me up because I'm ready to get out of here. Just came out. No, I'm not ready to get out. I'm perfectly fine. I just, I think we've. Yeah, it was a good. I, I think I think everything went pretty well. I think, again, we're getting better. The more and more we do it, I think we're getting better. Oh, so. Steve, those weren't all truck stops for some of those casinos or not? Uh, they should all be truck stops. All of them should be truck stops. And again, Stephen. That comes down to route planning. <laughs> Steven, are you bad at route planning? Is it kind of like a root canal? Route planning. Oh, and another thing route planning saves, just saying this. You don't have to pay for parking if you plan your route. If you do it right, for the most part, you don't have to pay for parking. Yeah, Curtis never got back with you if the boys got the stuff for him, so. Yeah, he must not be on you right now. He must be fixing. No, he are, he took off. Do all of you know, Curtis? Your roots are always planned. 
Do you want to put that on a bet? Is that why, Stephen, I'm going to have to give you my number. <laughs> so not only will you call Dan three or four times a day, but you could call me three or four times a day. I will be your Maury Povich for you. <laughs> Stephen, I want to be a man is not the father. <laughs> If I make it there before 70 hours run out, it was a great trip. That's funny. Well, right, I'm guys. glad to see you got a little bit of jokes in you. Oh, oh the giveaway. The giveaway. Yes, I'm sorry I smacked the microphone on that, ladies and gentlemen. That is completely my fault. Hey, Leanne says something about a giveaway. Yeah. What about... Let's feel this out there. Now, hold on a minute. we we got to be careful when we do this. All right. So, number one, first and foremost, if we're going to get into giveaways and stuff like that, we got to be careful because I don't want to be, number one, I don't want to be buying sub subscribers or subscribers. Oh, you don't want to be an Amazon store? No, well, no, I'm not saying that. There's going to be some things. Eventually here, we're going to get into where we're going to start selling some trucking related merchandise and whatnot but so trucking merchandise what are you talking about straps it'll be or? straps binders chains um we're going to uh leanne and i are going to start working on some apparel that we're going to be looking like we're going to start working on some hats um, i was going to say how about some hats and some tees some billboards yeah i mean i'm retiring but you can put my ugly ass face on there the silhouette of bob i mean it's got to be better than yours Everybody likes whiskers nowadays. Um, Leanne's got a great idea for uh, some mugs that we're going to be looking mm -hmm. at. Um, trying to get some of that out there, get some of that merchandise going. But, um, yeah, that's coming up. But we're, I don't know when we're going to be doing it, but it's going to come sometime. Um, well, my, my idea was is, you know, we talk, listen to the English professor talk during the day, during the, the session, and then we give a quiz like a high school thing. At the end, and who could answer the questions here's, right? Well, here's the, here's the problem. Who answers the questions right at the end could win a t shirt or a hat or a koozie or a mug, whatever Miss Leanne wants to do. If you do something like that, you don't involve everybody. Well, because no, you just involve your listeners that are all live. Well, if you can. can do that. Yeah. Since I now know that I'm on three other platforms that I didn't know about. Could also, you could be on five by next week. I'm about ready to retire. You're not retiring. You're not retiring. So is anybody uh, up for that uh, giveaway or some of those, uh, maybe whatever he gets into, the shirts and koozies and photos, autograph pictures? Ha, ha, ha. Joking. Oh my god, the autograph thing. Really? Are you seriously going to go down that road? Oh yeah, we could do this the Snapchat photo, you know, to together, you know, and autograph it and be like oh, You're killing me, man. You're killing me. So hey, you know what? Um I guess Don. Hey Don, uh did um did Justin get a deer this year? I I was thinking that I saw him I was thinking I saw the great white hunter. Uh Eric posted a Eric posted a uh, pick of it. Oh no, the Road Atlas giveaway. <laughs> That's pretty freaking lame. <laughs> who wants a Road Atlas? You don't know what Road Atlas is? I said, who wants one? I mean, come on. Everybody wants Alexa or Google. No calendars. Hey, hey, hey whoa, 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 Casey, whoa, great. Brady we wants can... an autograph picture. Did you see that? No, I did not see that. Holy crap. Well, you can have one of Dan. But Casey, I got a little excited there. No calendars. You don't want to see us calendared up? I mean, we could do the trucker calendar, or we could just do us calendar. No nudes, sorry. But not going to happen. Um, Probably break the lens what, if that happened. What, what did you even? What, what? I'm speechless. Why would you even bring up nudes? Of the calendar. Have you never seen the sports cylinder? Cylinder? Or sports cylinder. Sports Illustrated one where they have the offensive linemen. Them dudes are like three, 400 pounds naked on freaking calendars. I'm, I'm offensive no, linemen. No. Yeah, they take the 12 no. best offensive no. linemen and no. they make them. And they're all posed naked covering their stuff. No way. Yes. 
Dude. It's just like the bikini shoot, the naked shoots of the swimmers. Is he and seriously trying to talk me into making a calendar where I'm literally naked? No, we're not doing that. I said we're not oh, doing not that. Doing it. We are not, not doing that. No way. Well, Dude, you, whoa. What are you thinking? Erase your mind. I'm trying to. That's, I'm like, what are you thinking, dude? Holy cow. We what? just <laughs> we just went from four live to 55 live. Steven's like bub on the trailer with straps, dude. That's that's screwed up, dude. <laughs> that Steven, I want to be a man, disturbs me so bad. I don't even want to see you in person again right oh, now. That's messed up. So you guys are great. You guys are absolutely great. So Oh man, we got this going on. So what kind of autograph photo are you talking about there, Brandy? Dan and I had a conversation about him posing no, on a trailer all, last summer. One. No, what no, were you and Steve, no, I want to be a man, talking no, about me posing on a trailer for? No. First of all, the context of that conversation. Steven, the context of that. You better take care of your son real quick. First, no. You just got limited from three calls tomorrow to one, Steven. guys great i still want to know what brandy's talking about as what kind of photo she just wants an autograph photo well i mean We're like singly yes, we are not part we are far from being popular i don't think i'm popular i, don't really care. I mean how many freaking views have we had why don't you throw the numbers out to these people uh okay well I'll, I'll, let me pull it up i'll i'll tell you um, Post in the bed of a truck. <laughs> oh my God, Brandy! I mean, can can he sit on the tailgate and I sit on the on the the bed railing? I mean, or hopefully that's okay. You guys are killing me. You guys are absolutely killing me. Okay, so total views right now we're looking at a little over. I think it's okay. So let me add these because. Because he adds them all together and stuff. The that I've got here is, I don't know if it tells me the truth or not. So, we're posed on the trailer, she says. How about we take a photo of a truck and trailer hooked up and one in the bed and one on the trailer. Is that okay? Oh, my God. You guys, you guys, you guys are something else. You guys are something else. Get Bub in a truck bed and the views will be amazing. Steve, I want to be a man. You're just disgusting. I don't even want to know what's running through your mind right now as you're petting your dog. All right, so total views we're looking at right now is about it's about seventeen thousand, give or take. Today or is that all together? That's all together. See, now you need to tell them it's all together, not just today. Well, no. It's you got my hopes today. and prides all up, like, oh man, we got seventeen thousand well, viewers today. Well, well, right now. Uh, with just today, we're looking at uh, about a thousand. It's about thirteen hundred people that view us today. They're probably thinking, "Oh, what the heck?" However, that doesn't. It's not telling me. It's not telling me how long they were. And that's off of Facebook alone. <laughs> Steve, just stop, please. Steve, stop. Yeah, that, that's off of Facebook alone. Um, as far as the YouTube <laughs> side of things, we're looking at. Let me load this up. KC really shouldn't be a winter shoot. I'd be more comfortable with a winter shoot than a summer shoot. Um, okay, so as far as our the analytics off of YouTube as of right now, we have been watched a total of 305 minutes, which isn't great. But it's a start. I mean, hey, whatever. And it's been we've been viewed about 18 times on YouTube. So, not bad. So what's the other floor mats that you got us on that we're not uh, the doing the best at? The free load quotes. So you got to realize that the FLQ side is kind of the newer side of things. The free load is the older side. And we used to push that pretty hard. Um, so that's where a majority of our views are going to be coming from. And I don't have those numbers in front of me because I have everything set up underneath FLQ right now. So. Well, Dawn, you're kind of surprising me. You ain't got no ideas about these photo shoots or any of that stuff. And she says she's having a good one. She's just going to ditch us. I mean that's very uncommon for you, Don. You're a little bit of Dude, a we've been wild at this spirit. For an hour and forty minutes. We're still getting comments. Besides, Steve, I want to be a man. So I what mean, what do you want to do? Keep running this until everybody starts commenting? That's not fair. I'm having a fun time, aren't you? I, 
it, it, I mean, it's a good time, but I don't yeah, know. it is a good time. It's not like, well, we got to hit this gas station oh, instead yeah. of this gas station. You sound like Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. Hey, you know what? Speaking of that, did, did anybody hear about the Charlie Brown, I think, Christmas that they're actually going to be able to bring back now? Am I right on that? I thought I heard that on the news earlier today. Did anybody hear that? Oh, your wife's finally signing off, thank God. No, seriously, did anybody hear about the Charlie Brown Christmas? I knew they took down the, the, the Halloween one, where she always pulled the football away from him. But supposedly, well, maybe I heard it wrong. Brandy says you could do one with Dan and all the drivers. Why do I have to be involved in it? I'm just a a, a, a dude that stops by and has a conversation with Dan. Hey, look, uh, like I said, I appreciate Bob for everything he does. Steven, I want to be a man. That's just not even right right there. Hey, Bob, I make all the truck stops fun. <laughs> That's great to you. Kudos. If I could give you a Scooby snack right now, I'd send it to you, but I'm not interested. You guys are something else. Anyways, hey, um, we're going to cut it quits. I appreciate everything. It was good. It was a lot of fun. Um, next week, we're going to be doing it. Um, Live. <laughs> ah, the grandson. Yeah. Oh, you missed the best part of the video. Sorry, Don. That's all right. And You'll have to rewind it back. Is, is Jade Jade still up there? I'm assuming so. Or did she did she leave? T wasn't even here. I don't think Tina showed up. Tina no, never showed up. She didn't miss it. I didn't see oh. any comments. Oh, and I had Sandra wasn't even here. Uh, Sandra was not here today. Sandra. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to sign off and have a good, good night tonight. Uh, wish everybody some sweet dreams, and uh, all right. we'll all see you tomorrow or next well, week. We got one oh. more thing here. We got one more thing to do. So we're going to have a giveaway on, um, finish up on the giveaway. We're going to get back. Is, to that our, is that our photo then? Huh? Is that our photo or is that the Atlas? Rules, etc., for the giveaway. Basically, the only the only rules that you have to do is you have to enter, or you don't have to enter. Um, you have to follow, like, comment, and subscribe. Um, try to get us out there. Right now, the giveaway is going to be. I would like some Christmas lights and an elf on the shelf. Does anybody want one of these? I know it's corny. And I know it sucks. It's not a GPS. I'm not a big fan of GPSs. I, Dude, look at my face right now. I mean, a road atlas. I know. Really? Road atlas. Wow. You know, once here, here's the deal. If we do get some traction on this... Um, I know the first winner is going to get that road atlas. Who's, who's going to get the road oh, atlas? Oh, winner, winner, chicken dicker. I, I'm uh, not I saying. Have, I have a good feeling. I have a good feeling. Anyways. The dragon tail. Maybe. All right. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna try the. We're gonna try to do this giveaway, and I gotta make sure I do it right. I don't want to do it. I, I've got to learn. Um, I'm going to have to learn how we do everything here. Okay. So for the giveaways, so I'm gonna have to look into it a lot more. Um, I want to make sure it's fair. I want to make sure I give a lot of people opportunities. But eventually. I think you should give your phone number out, and whoever texts you first should get it. No. Could you imagine a lot of lizards that might get that number? Could you imagine? No, I, I ain't doing that. Especially with Steven. He could pass that thing out. Man, no. Um, so what we'll do, what we'll do with the giveaway is we'll either, um, we're going to try to keep it trucking related. Um, I haven't really decided what the next giveaway will be, but I've got to have some sort of a template to work off to actually make sure that we're going to do it the correct way. I don't, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we will get this corrected. We will have the right template 
just trust me on this before I retire. I will at least pass out 10 Santa's Helper gifts. Yeah. Um, we're also, um, I have a, we're going to start probably taking a vote after uh, the holidays, or not after the holidays, but after Thanksgiving. Um, here's something that we're going, um, that we're going to do. Um, we're probably going to, I'm going to try to announce it next week. Um, but we're going to make a donation in the company's name, okay, to a, um, to an organization of less fortunate people or, um, somebody who needs, um, needs some help. Um, I need help. It, it, well, we're going to we're going to make a donation either to a family, or we're going to make a donation to a specific organization. Um, I, I, and I got to be careful with this. I don't want to bring anybody's name. I, I don't want to get involved with with doing a name. Um, can dispatchers be added to this stuff? Uh, yes, we're we're working on something. We've got a boatload of we've got a lot of things that we're trying to get going here. Okay, um, that's going to help the channel. Um, that's going to make us grow as a company and um, be able to do things. But one of the things, I, being that it's close to Thanksgiving I, next week, I'm going to try to have something put into place where we're going to probably give a um, thousand dollars to a less fortunate family. Or um, we're going to buy um, some kids some coats uh, or shoes or to be able to give somebody a Christmas. Um, this year has been pretty hard on some people, and um, I think we kind of need to give back um, and to help some people. So um, if you guys are, if you guys have anybody who you would like to um, refer, um, we're not going to air them out publicly. Um, but uh, we want to be able to do that for um, our community and we also want to be able to um, you know get some sort of an idea of, of what would be either a group or a specific family I say if we get families you think it's family I said if better? if we get families mm -hmm. um how are you going to handle that is it going to be driver area families is it going to be I mean, you know what I'm saying? Um, basically, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to establish their basic needs. So a perfect example would be if somebody, let's say, for example, you know personally know somebody that literally has lost absolutely everything to a house fire. Oh, I seriously, I'm sorry to cut you off. Last night, my mother-in-law mm -hmm. down the road lives in the country. Yeah. House burned to the ground. Kids lost everything. Didn't even have nothing to wake up this morning to go to school with. And it's this time of the year. No Thanksgiving dinner. No Christmas. No Christmas tree. No Christmas lights. Now, do I know that family? No, I don't. But my mother-in-law was talking about it tonight. But I'm just saying that's the situation that could be, you know. What I'd, what I'd really like to do, what I'd really like to do is, because we are a family-oriented company, at least I think we are, and I try to, I try to be, as much as possible. Um, I want to try to keep it to some sort of um, some sort of way to keep it. I would say it should be a direct message to you since you're the boss, the champ. Well, it'll be a direct message, and we're going to have to evaluate it on a case by case basis because I, you know, this could be a very touchy subject to some people. Because everybody, it's very, it, this may be a better situation where we, I don't know, to be honest with you, I don't know how to go about doing this. But I think that for us as a company moving forward, I think in one shape, form, or fashion or the other, we need to be able to give back to either A, the community here around Hicksville, or somebody locally in around town, or, or somebody that you can... Um, kind of sponsor as somebody who needs the help okay um i'm thinking anywhere between 500 to a thousand dollars which i know is not that much money to some people and i know in a time of need but 
if somebody's able to get a thousand dollars to help pay for their kids' Christmas, okay, you know, um, I think it's something that we can do. So, um, if you guys have any anybody that you would like to refer or or something like that, I want to try to start gaining some traction on that. Um, I would definitely like to have it done before. Um, I would say we're going to probably be looking at it before um, the week before Christmas, I think. Because it, it, let's say we are giving to a needy family or somebody who needs that assistance, we want to make sure that we get the money in their hands so that we could help them out prior um, to their kids. Man, a week, I'm not saying being rude, but a week's not going to be enough time, I don't think. A week before Christmas. You don't think so? Well, no. I mean, not to say with the COVID stuff. I mean, I'm no. I know toys aren't flying off the shelves like toilet paper is right now, or hand sanitizer. But I mean, you know, it's gonna. You got your, your ten o'clock deadlines of being out, and you're gonna have all these people that do have the money. That's, you know, what it's like when you try to go do last minute Christmas shopping. There's nothing there. I kind of think this is coming to it uh, maybe towards the end of the. You know, we kind of we probably should have started this a little bit earlier but but anything counts dan anything, yeah, anything counts. even if it's even if it's a hundred dollars two hundred dollars yeah. and in, instead of giving it to one family you can spread it out to multiple families yeah. you know you say you got 500 bucks give a hundred dollars to each family or something i know that's not a lot but it's still something for them people right. yeah. and you know there's you know there's we never hope that our kids are never going to have that morning that that right. to not wake up and not have nothing right. especially with like our local fire department that gets all the toys for tots and stuff they pretty much make sure all the kids are covered but still there's always still somewhere there's always somebody out there that somebody forgets about that um doesn't need to be forgot about and um you know Guys, I, you know, I am I am very thankful that I've got a friend like Bob that will take his busy Thursday and come over and spend some time with me and help me do something. Um, <laughs> Casey says whatever's wrong with me is no little thing. <laughs> yeah, Bob's got some things that are, that are definitely wrong with him. Um, but, you know, he kind of hit me like an act truck. Uh, the other day where it's just like you know what we we do have some means to be able to help out other people in the community now i don't want to be taken advantage of of course but at the same time we want to try to give back to the community and try to help out so um if you guys have any suggestions uh i'm open for it um i'm going to be driving all day long tomorrow um so if you have any suggestions, the, you know, if you got my personal line, give me a call. Um, if you're not with the company and you don't have my personal line, um, go ahead and call the office, uh, and Leanne will take down your your information, who you who you'd like to represent, or who you'd like to refer that that needs some help. Um, we're going to definitely have to have some specific questions that are going to be asked. Um, that way, it's not going to be somebody who's just making up a bunch of crap which it's unfortunate but there are people out there that does that so um anyways guys um you know casey you made that comment yeah there's a little bit wrong with you no little thing whatever hey i'll tell you what dude if you needed the shirt off my back right now i'd give it to you you can ask dan right now Bob's that, Bob is that type of a guy. I might be a little screw loose might like to have a little bit of fun because you're only young and you're only here on this planet once but Man, if somebody needed help, I will find out a way. I will do my best, whatever I can, to help that person out. Well, on that note, and with what Dan has to say, and with this, I think it's great that you want to help somebody out. It's an awesome thing. Um, get with Dan, the man. We'll try. Yeah. We want to wish every one of you a safe and happy Thanksgiving on your travels and your time that you're with your family if you choose so. And uh, we'll see you possibly Thursday night. And if anybody wants to come join our live Facebook show, maybe I'll show up. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll sign my papers and I'll be out. It's a free will. But everybody have a good night and God bless. Yeah, we'll talk to you guys later. You guys be careful out there. And, um We'll talk to you later, okay? You guys have a good one.
Yeah, I like that breed. <laughs> 